Today we are in front of this lovely home in this lovely neighborhood to install a rain garden. Rain gardens help reduce the amount of runoff that we have from rainstorms. They also recharge our groundwater and they filter pollution. When we build roads and, and driveways and sidewalks, we are making the ground surface hard. Stormwater, rainwater, can't infiltrate, it can't soak in anymore. So we make more runoff, and that runoff carries all of the pollution that settles on our streets and on our, on our driveways. So by installing a rain garden, we're going to reduce the amount of runoff, we're going to filter the pollution, and we're going to do good things for our groundwater. Today we're going to walk you through step by step on how you can build your own rain garden. We're really excited about this project so hang in there and we're going to have a good time. Okay so the first thing we want to think about when building a rain garden is where we're going to put it. Um, in general rain gardens should be located about 10 feet away from the foundation uh, or the garage and in a natural depression or on a gentle slope. You don't have to worry about putting a rain garden immediately next to a downspout. Rainwater can flow across the lawn. The most important aspect is that the rain garden be able to collect runoff. And here you can see an example. Here's a downspout. In this case, the downspout runs across the pavement. Here's another downspout in the same house. And this has been piped immediately or directly to the roadway. So this homeowner is going to reroute this roof runoff into their rain garden location. And in fact, they've decided to use this planting area in the front as the collection point for their um, rainwater. And this is going to turn into or become the rain garden. Once you've decided where you're going to put your rain garden, your absolute first step is calling Miss Utility. We have an amazing amount of power lines, internet lines, gas lines, electric fences, all kinds of things under our lawns in our neighborhoods. And the last thing you want to do is blow up or cut off your neighbor's internet. So call before you dig. It's simple, it's free, and they will come out and they will mark everything. Here's an example of all the markings in this lawn. As you can see, there's quite a bit. As a project that's about to dig into this, we want to make sure we avoid these. So this neighbor has done his job. Next step is a soil test and the Turf Love volunteers will take care of that for you. So that leaves you with the infiltration test. Infiltration test measures how quickly water can be absorbed by your rain garden location. And what we're looking for is a number like how many inches of water will drop in a one hour time period. So the first thing you want to do is Take a post hole digger or any you know shovel that you have and dig a hole about 18 inches deep and 8 to 12 inches wide. The second step is to rough up the sides of that hole. Uh, just the fact of digging a hole, the shovel blades will smear the soil, kind of seal it off and we won't get a very good infiltration test. So we find that if we rough up the edges, uh, we'll get a better reading. Then the next step will be to start putting in a measuring stick of some sort. You can use a yardstick, you can use a stake, you can use a rake handle, anything you can measure off inches. We're using a stake that we've marked um, our water level on and inches. So once we get this in, we're going to fill this hole up to the water level mark and you can pick whatever that is on your yard if you're using a yardstick. So we filled up the hole with water and as you can see it's already started to drop. We use this information to determine what kinds of plants will go in your rain garden. If it drops, um, say, eight inches in an hour, then you can use a very wide variety of plants. If, uh, if it only drops two inches in an hour, you're going to use more plants that, that 
are more wetland-like plants because they're going to be sitting in water more frequently. In any case, the rain garden should be designed so that it doesn't hold water for more than 48 hours. Okay, so now you have your infiltration rate. It's time to look at how much of your impervious or hard surfaces like driveways and patios and roofs will actually drain to the location you've chosen for your rain garden. And in this case, you can see the orange portion of the roof drains towards that rain garden in the backyard, and the blue portion of the roof drains toward the rain garden in the front yard. Your roof will look different. Uh, so you need to kind of walk around your yard, look at how the water flows. Uh, Turf Love folks can help you with this. So if you've got 500 square feet of of roof and driveway or lawn running to your rain garden area, you need to have a rain garden that's 50 to 60 square feet in size or about five by 10 or six by 10. At the end of the day, a rain garden is a basin. So we're looking for a very shallow center, usually in our area about 12 to 18 inches deep, we're going to put aquatic plants in the deepest portion. This is where our infiltration rate information becomes important. And then we use grass or ground covers on the berm. And here you can see the three planting zones. Uh, the zone A is the wettest part. So those are the most wet tolerant plants. Zone B is sort of a transition zone and zone C is usually a berm or something that looks more like your yard but holds the water, helps the water to stay inside the garden so it can infiltrate. Every rain garden should have an overflow because we always get big, big storms that will kind of overwhelm a garden and we want it to overflow in a safe fashion so that the, the rain garden is not damaged. Here's our rain garden. We've, we've figured out the roof area, the contributing area. We've you know, looked at the infiltration rate. We've come up with our size. And you can see they flagged two rows here. Uh, one is the interior portion that will be the zone A or the deepest portion. And then you've got the exterior ring of flags are the, um, the berm area. We are ready to go. It is time to start digging. Here we have our homeowners. We've got the director and we've got the worker. And you can see that this is going to take some time. This is where you want to invite your friends over, have a pizza party, get as much help as you can. Um, because this is no small undertaking. Wow, here we have our instantaneously dug rain garden. But this is perfectly done. You can see the center is deeper. You can see the berm around the edges. You can also see that they've added a trench so they can reroute that roof runoff that was going to the road. So these folks are ready to start uh, filling. So here you can see the soil that was taken out of the rain garden. It's stockpiled here in the driveway. And since every rain garden is different and the soil in every yard is different, we need to modify that soil before we put it back in the rain garden in order to make it the best possible planting medium for the selected rain garden plants. In this case, our soils here are quite tight. So this homeowner is going to need to add sand and organic material like a compost and mix that up really well and put it back in the rain garden before planting. Another rain garden may have a very fast infiltration rate and may not need to add any sand at all to the excavated material. In that case, they may only need to add uh, some organic material or compost. In either case, the best way to get assistance with this is to take a sample of the excavated material to a lawn and garden center or work with Turf Love or even look it up online. There are resources to get assistance for how to get the best recipe for your rain garden. Okay, now's the time to select the plants for your rain garden. But the goal here is to have the best plants to meet your aesthetic goals and to meet the conditions of your garden. 
here's an example of a planting plan that was developed by a master gardener. And what the beauty of a pl having a plan like this is that it help you pick the right number, or purchase the right number of plants, help you set them out. All you have to do is follow the plan, put the plants where the plan shows them, and it makes planting much easier. So the plants are here, and now it's time to start planting. Homeowners have taken their planting plan and they're beginning to place their plants as shown on the plan. This is a pretty exciting time. There's nothing better than getting those first plants in. Planting can take quite a bit of time here, so let's speed this up. Okay, so here we have our beautifully planted rain garden. You can see that there are the most water tolerant plants are in the center. They've put some ground covers on the berm. Those are going to fill in over time. And right here in the front, you can see the stone overflow area. So when this rain garden fills up in a really large rainstorm, there is a place for that water to spill out over the yard and it's not going to cause a problem to the rain garden or to the yard. So they did a terrific job. All they have to do now for the first few months is to keep, or first few weeks really, is to keep this well watered so that these plants can get hold and get acclimated to the site. And then over time, once it's established, really all you need to do is keep them mulched and keep the trash out. These are really uh, very simple and they maintain themselves really well. So there you have it, voila, a rain garden. So to help you with your rain garden planning, here are a list of resources and a list of contacts. Please feel free to give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about a rain garden in your yard and we would love to give you any assistance we can.